Namaste and a very, very good evening to all of you. I welcome you to my channel, The Outlier. My name is Mithun. In today's video, I'll be talking about what is called as the marketing mix model. Even before I proceed to talk about the marketing mix model, may I request you to subscribe to my channel, also like and share my videos. Let's begin with today's agenda. There are five points which I'll be talking about. Firstly, introduction to marketing mix model. Secondly, the data that is required to build a solid marketing mix model. Thirdly, what are the seven effects that we are trying to capture in a marketing mix model? Fourthly, a statistical model called as the COIC model, which is built to understand the key drivers of a marketing mix model. Lastly, there is another statistical model called as distributed lag model, which is typically used in a marketing mix arrangement. With this agenda, let us proceed to understand what exactly do we mean by a marketing mix. When we speak about marketing mix, there are four P's in marketing which drive sales. What are these four P's? The first P is product, second P is price, the third P is place, and the fourth P is promotion. These are the four P's which influences sales. Product, price, place, and promotion, these are the factors which drive sales. So when we speak about a typical marketing mix model, we consider product, price, place, promotion as the input, sales as the dependent variable. As a side note, I've picked up this particular image from Google. Uh, the specific website is SEO Optimal. So thanks uh, to this particular uh, website for making this uh, picture available. Moving on, what are the different elements in a marketing mix model? The different elements in promotion are sales promotion, advertising, public relations, and direct marketing. Nextly, when it comes to the second P of marketing, namely product, we are looking at product features, the quality of the product, branding, packaging, services, warranties, the newness of the product, what differentiates a particular product from its competitors. When it comes to the third P, we are looking at price strategy, pricing, allowances, discounts, and payment terms. When it comes to the fourth P, that is the place, we are mainly looking at channels, market coverage, assortment, location, inventory, and transport. These are the different elements which we will be using as the input variables to identify the key drivers of sales. Again, I've picked up this particular image from Google. The specific website is the Int Act one So full credit to them for making this particular image available. Next, we move on to what are the typical objectives behind building a marketing mix model? There are three main objectives when we build a marketing mix model. The first objective is to identify the key drivers of sales. The second objective would be to optimize the advertising dollar amount for the next quarter or year. Thirdly, we are also interested in estimating the current effect and carryover effect. I'll explain what is current effect and what is carryover effect in the subsequent slides. What's the kind of data that is required to build a marketing mix model? Typically, we would look at all the seasonal factors. Why seasonal factors? Simply because in some seasons, we see the sales shoot up. In other seasons, we see the sales go down. For example, in the month of December, because of Christmas, and in January, because of New Year, or because of festive seasons in other months, sales may shoot up. Secondly, we also look at different macroeconomic factors like GDP, per capita income, population growth rate, taxes, which drive sales. The third important factor is price, followed by distribution channel, and then advertising data. Lastly, we look at promotion data. All these are used as input features to identify the impact of each of these items on the dependent variable, namely sales. Now, 
what are the seven effects that as a data scientist, we are interested in tracking when we build a marketing mix model? So as you can see here, there are seven different effects. The first one is what is called as current effect. The second effect is carryover effect. The third effect is shape effect. The fourth effect is competitive effect. The next effect is dynamic effect. The sixth effect is content effect. And lastly, we have what is called as the media effect. So when we are building a typical marketing mix model, we are trying to track current effect, carryover effect, shape effect, competitive effect, dynamic effect, content effect, and media effect. What are each of these things? Let's begin with what is current effect. I repeat, the first effect that we are trying to track is what is called as current effect. What do we understand by current effect? Current effect is simply the change in the sales caused by advertising effect in the same time period. I repeat, the change in sales caused by advertising effect in the same time period. Carryover effect is slightly different from current effect. When we say carryover effect, we are referring to the change in the sales caused by advertising post its exposure either for short or long term. Suppose I give a burst of advertising this week, you may see the impact of advertising last not just in this week, but also for week two and week three, which is what is called as carryover effect. Then we have what is called as the shape effect. Change in sales in response to increasing the intensity of advertising in the same time period. There are three typical shapes. Here we can have a linear or a concave or S-shaped curve. So by using a simple scatter plot, we can understand the shape effect. Next, we move on to the fourth kind of effect, which is called as competitive effect. What do we understand by competitive effect? The competitive effect of target brands advertising is its effectiveness in relation to that of other brands in the market. I'll repeat this for you. The competitive effect of target brands advertising is its effectiveness in relation to that of other brands in the market. Then we have what is called as the dynamic effect. This is nothing but the change in sales caused by advertising the change over time. Typical examples are what we call as wear in and wear out effect along with carryover effect. Next, we have what is called as the content effect. Content ef effect refers to change in sales caused by advertising due to change in the content or creative cues in the ads. The challenge is to model this unless the differences in the ads are measured accurately, it becomes very, very difficult to track the content effect. The last kind of effect that we're looking at is what is called the media effect. This refers to the change in sales caused by advertising due to change in the media, such as TV or newspaper, and programs within them, such as TV channels or selection of story for newspaper. So these are the seven different effects that we are trying to model using a marketing mix model. Let's first talk about the shape effect. As you can see here, in the y-axis, we have sales. And the x-axis, we can have marketing effort. Typically, to model sales versus marketing, we can use a linear model. But a linear model has its own problems. Therefore, instead of a linear curve, we can either try a concave shaped or an S-shaped curve. Or further, we can also experiment with a convex shaped curve. So these are the three different options that we have either linear or we can do a shaped or the last option is either concave or convex. Let's now try to understand what's the difference between current effect versus carryover effect. As you can see here, in the y-axis we have sales and in the x-axis we have time. What exactly do we mean by current effect? Suppose a burst of advertising is given in week one. 
you are likely to see the impact in week one itself. So this is called as current effect. The dotted lines here refer to the baseline sales, that is the sales without any advertisement. Each of the arrows are nothing but the sales, sorry, the marketing effort that is made in a particular week. If you give a, if you give a marketing burst, if you give an advertisement burst in the second week, you're likely to see the impact in week two itself. This refers to current effect. Please compare current effect with that of carryover effect. Carryover effect is very, very different from that of current effect. While in the current effect, the impact of advertising is seen in that particular week itself. In the case of carryover effect, if you give a burst of advertising in week one, you'll see an impact not just in week one, the effect lasts for several weeks. It may last for week two, week three, week four. However, the effect goes on decaying. This is what is called as carryover effect of long duration. So this is the difference between current effect and carryover effect. Let's now talk about the difference between carryover effect versus persistence effect. Here, I'm talking about carryover effect of shorter duration. My apologies, let me just go back. I'm talking about carryover effect of shorter duration. As you can see here, if we give a burst of advertising in the first week, we see, an, we see a spike in the same week. However, in the subsequent days of the first week, the impact dies. There is a decline in the impact. No doubt that there is a carryover effect, but it doesn't stay for a longer duration. It dies very, very soon. Because the impact is short-lived, we say that this is carryover effect of short duration. The same trend, the same pattern you can observe for week two, week three, and week four. There is a short impact of carryover effect. Please compare the picture to the left side to the earlier picture. This is the picture to the right side that we were looking at. This is carryover effect of longer duration because the impact of advertisement is seen for a longer duration. However, in the case of short, in the case of carryover effect of short duration, as the name itself suggests, the impact is there, but it lasts for a very, very short duration. Now, let's talk about what is called as persistent effect. Very rare, but we observe persistent effect as well. In the x-axis, we can see a burst of advertisement that is given in a particular week. You can see a big spike corresponding to that week. And for the other weeks, the impact stays and it remains intact. You don't see a big decline in the impact. The impact of advertisement on sales continues for a long duration. This is called as persistent effect. So this essentially is the difference between a carryover effect of short duration versus a persistent effect. Moving on. Here, we are interested in the difference between what is called as wear-in effect versus wear-out effect. Please note that both of these effects are part of what is called as dynamic effect. What is the difference between wear-in effect and wear-out effect? As you can see here, we are trying to understand what is the difference between wear-in effect and wear-out in advertisement effectiveness. To the left side, you see a spike and then there is a continuous increase. However, to the right side, after some time, the impact sort of declines, which is called as wear-out effect. So the simple difference in understanding wear-in versus wear-out would be as follows. The variance is the increase in the response of sales to advertising from one week to the next of a campaign, even though the advertising occurs at the same level each week. So here we are talking about the increase in the response of sales to advertising from one week to the next of a campaign, even though the advertising occurs at the same level each week. Compare this with wear out. What exactly do we mean by wear out? 
In the case of wear out, wear out refers to the decline in the response of sales. I repeat, while wear in spoke about the increase in the response of sales, here when we talk about wear out, we are referring to the decline in the response of sales to advertising from one week to the next of a campaign, even though the advertising occurs at the same or higher level each week. So this is the essential difference between wear in and wear out. And these are two important elements that we are trying to track under the dynamic effect. Now let's talk about the statistical model that we can use to build a marketing mix model. The first of the models is what is called as COIC model. Here, when we build the model, the dependent variable is sales and the notation for sales that we are going to use is YT, which means sales in a particular month. The T, the subscript T refers to a particular time point. What are we taking as the independent variables? We can use lagged sales. If you're using the first lag, it will be YT minus one. What, what do we mean by lag sales? Suppose we are interested in identifying the sales of March. Let us call this as the dependent variable sales of March. Now sales of March may be influenced by previous month sales. That is the sales of February might influence the sales in the month of March. So if you are calculating the first lag, if you're calculating, if you're using February month sales as the independent variable, that is the first lag. If you go further back and use January month sales as well as the influencing factor to find out whether January month sales also influences the sales in the month of March, you can call this as lag two. So we have sales, the previous month sales can be used as the independent variable, but apart from using lag sales, we can also use APRQ model. What is this APRQ model? A stands for advertisement, P for price, R for sales promotion, and Q for quality. I'll repeat, A for advertisement, P for price, sales promotion is used, sales promotion is denoted by R, and finally, Q refers to quality, APRQ model. So this is the typical setup for a marketing mix model. Let's now look at a COIC model. As you can see here, this is a typical COIC model. YT equals alpha, which is the interceptor, plus lambda times YT minus one. As I was saying, the sales in the month of March is influenced by the previous month's sales. So YT minus one is the first lag. The coefficient of previous month is denoted by the notation lambda. Next we have the coefficient of advertisement which is B, beta 1. Then we have price. Beta 2 is the coefficient of price. Then we have promotion. The coefficient of promotion is beta 3. And finally we have QT which is nothing but quality. The, promote, the coefficient of QT is beta 4. So the COIC model simply goes like this. YT equals alpha plus lambda times YT minus 1 plus beta 1 times AT, plus beta 2 times PT, plus beta 3 times RT, plus beta 4 times QT, plus error term. Now, when we run this model, we are going to get the coefficients for not just the lag variable, but also for each of the elements of the marketing mix, advertisement, price, promotion, and quality. Now, using these coefficients, we can determine three important effects. The first effect that we are trying to pull out is the current effect of advertising. How do we get the current effect? By looking at beta 1, the quotient of advertising that tells us the current effect of advertising. If you want to determine the carryover effect of advertising, all that we need to do is take out beta 1, multiply it by lambda, divided by 1 minus lambda. You may ask me, what is lambda? Lambda is nothing but the quotient for lag sales. The question is, how do we interpret lambda? The higher the value of lambda, the longer the effect of advertising. I repeat, if you get a really high value for lambda, it means that 
the longer is the effect of advertising. On the other hand, if the value of lambda is very small, if it is very tiny, the shorter the effect of advertising so that the sales depends more on only the current advertising. So smaller the value of lambda, it implies the shorter is the effect of advertising. So sales mostly uh, depends only on current advertising. So this is how we can pull out current effect simply by looking at beta one. Next is beta one into lambda divided by one minus lambda would give us the carryover effect. The third effect would be the total effect of advertising. How do we get the total effect of advertising? You can get the total effect of advertising by looking at beta one and dividing it by one minus lambda. So through a simple coic model, we are able to tell what is current effect, what is carryover effect, as well as the total effect of advertising. Now let's look at an alternative to coic model, which is called as the distributed lag model. I repeat, we are looking at what is called as a distributed lag model. This works similar to a coic model, except for the fact that there are few differences. Here again, yt is the dependent variable. We have the intercept term, namely alpha. We have created multiple lags here. We are not just stopping at yt minus one. We can have yt minus two, yt minus three, all the way up to the point that we feel these lag variables can influence the dependent variable. So we have multiple lag variables for dependent as well as for independent variables. Nextly, we have advertisement. We can have multiple lag variables, not just the first lag. We can look at second lag, third lag, fourth lag, fifth lag, depending upon the domain and depending upon the need of the situation, we can create multiple lags for advertisement and find out the coefficient for each of these lags for lags of advertisement. Next, we have price, then we have promotion and quality. The coefficient for price is beta two, the coefficient for promotion is beta three, and finally the coefficient of quality is beta four. Any model is accompanied by the error term, which is denoted by epsilon e. So this is how we can use a distributed lag model. Now, what are some of the benefits of using a distributed lag model? The main benefit of using a distributed lag model is that it handles all shapes and forms of carryover effects. I repeat, it handles all shapes and forms of carryover effects. As with any model, this model also has a set of limitations. The first limitation is multicollinearity. Let me just go back a couple of slides. As you can see here, we are talking about lagged sales. That is, sales in the month of March may be influenced by sales in the month of February as well as January. But since we are using almost the same variable, these variables tend to have tremendous levels of multicollinearity. And when there is multicollinearity, the coefficients will be unstable. The same argument holds good even for advertisement. Since we are creating multiple lags for advertisement, all these variables may be correlated. And in the presence of correlated independent variables, the estimates will be unstable. The standard errors will be very, very high. The confidence interval will be wider. All of these things are indicative of unstable coefficients. The second limitation of a distributed lag variable, a distributed model, is that estimating the number of lag variables is difficult and unreliable. So when I say go back and create lag variables, the question is how many lag variables are we going to create? Two, three, four, five, six. It's a bit difficult to estimate the number of lag variables. And hence, this is one of the limitations of a typical distributed lag model. Nevertheless, coic model and distributed lag models, both of these models are widely used in building a marketing mix model. A note of caution here, I have highlighted two popular models. I'm not trying to say that these are the only two models which are used in the market while building a marketing mix models. There are umpteen number of models. I've tried to highlight these two models in this video. With this, I have come to the end of today's video. We have looked at what exactly is marketing mix. 
the four P's of marketing, the different elements of marketing. Further, we have looked at what is current effect, carryover effect, media effect, content effect, dynamic effect. We have also looked at where in effect and where out effect, persistence effect. We have tried to break down the carryover effect into two parts, long-term effect as well as short-term effect. Then we looked at two useful statistical models which can be used to build a marketing mix model. I thank you very much for watching this particular video. I request you to subscribe to my channel, like and share my videos. Thank you very much. Have a great day.